Hi guys. So I've been spending hours and hours and hours over the last couple weeks trying to find the best way to record video for these Ableton tutorials. And um, it's not easy per se, or rather it's it's not as hard as I thought it was, but it's it's not always straightforward. And the, the problem is that Ableton's a really big program. And if you have you know big complex projects, you're quickly going to run into problems because you have all this processor used from these big projects, but then you're also trying to capture what's going on on your screen. You're also trying to capture your microphone audio. You're also trying to capture your camera, right? And, you know, as well as actually playing this Ableton project. And you've also got to capture the system audio that's coming out of Ableton, right? So it's a lot of stuff going on at once. And I was using this program called Filmora Screen, right? But Filmora sucks. Right, don't use Filmora. Um, I've been using instead this program called OBS. Right, OBS is great. Right, it's way more configurable. Right, it's way more processor efficient as far as I can tell. I can run much bigger projects while you know recording everything that I want to without any of these audio dropouts that I was suffering while using Filmora. Right, and it's way more uh, configurable in terms of everything else that you would want to do. Right, so I'm going to go through what that actually means. Um, so first, let me show you uh, the screen capture, All right? So this is the screen capture, and we've got this sort of infinite mirrors effect going on um, because it's capturing the screen, which is also showing you what it's capturing and so forth. I'm pretty sure you understand why. Um, so let me show you what's available first off and what, some of the reasons why it's way better. Um, so first off, you can configure the video, right? So if I go to properties, uh, and I go to configure video, right? I can change all these different things like the white balance, right? And the gamma and like the brightness and whatnot, right? I've got it set basically where I want to or want it, so I'm not going to change very much, right? But uh, you get the point. So you can actually change these things, right? Um, which you can't do in Filmora, and maybe you can do it in other capture things. I don't know. Like I tried using, um, was it uh, DX Story, DX T O R Y, DX Story? Um, I couldn't get that to work at all. I tried using Shadow Play, which is Nvidia's um, screen capture stuff that's built in, uh, but I couldn't get that to work because of. Um, it's basically this Optimus thing. It, it's it's a system that they have that switches from your integrated graphics to your um, uh, NVIDIA graphics card. And if you've got that, uh, like a lot of laptops do, then you can't uh, do screen capture with Shadowplay, which is really resource efficient um, because it, it just takes it right from your NVIDIA card. Um, yeah, but this is great. You know, I've had absolutely no problems with this. So... Um, some of the other benefits, you know, I said that you can configure your video, right? You can also use VST plugins, right? So check this, right? Now, if you're doing Ableton tutorials, presumably you know how to use VST plugins, right? If you don't, then you probably shouldn't be using or doing Ableton tutorials, right? Um, but let's go to properties. Uh, oh, not this one. Let's go to filters, right? So filters is is where it's at. So I've got this limiter, which you'll notice is Pro L2 by FabFilter, right? So I can open this up and you'll see if I, if I like clap really loud, it hits my limiter, right? So I can keep my microphone from clipping right inside the screen capture software, which is great. Because if you don't do it inside the screen capture software, then you're going to clip your microphone because you can't do it after the fact in editing because you've already clipped by that point, right? Same thing with this gate, right? If I don't talk, Right? You're not going to pick up my, the noise and my ambient noise in this environment, right? So I've got this gate going for you guys as well, right? So pretty sweet, right? Uh, so you've got those sorts of configuration options. I'll also point you to the screen, right? So this screen, this is actually the screen capture right here. So you can see it highlighted in red. This is my microphone, or sorry, my camera capture, and this whole bigger area, which would all be black, right? So this whole black area here, right, is my canvas that I'm, I'm creating the video for, right? And then in editing, I'm going to shrink it down to this size and, you know, put everything where it's supposed to be moment by moment. 
But uh, for now, the reason I have this set up is so that I can capture my camera over here, my screen over here, and then I can just slice it up into editing. The default would be to have my camera overlaid on top of my screen capture, right? Which isn't desirable because then I can't move it around in editing. I only have uh, just wherever it is when I capture, right? So this lets me sort of slice it up in editing after the fact, right? Um, so that's, that's sort of the gist of this camera stuff. Another really important way I have this set up is you need to capture two audio streams, right? So the default would be to sort of collapse it into one stream. So I'd have my microphone going on and I would have my uh, system audio going on, right? So if I'm playing something out of Ableton like this guy, first off, this project would never, ever be able to work in uh, Filmora and what I was using. It would just, you know, climb to a halt. But if I play this... Right, the audio is fine, right? And uh, that will be on a separate audio track in the video that this, this capture process outputs, right, compared to my microphone. All right, so I'll have a separate microphone track and a separate audio track, which can be really useful for a lot of reasons, especially if you're um, playing out of studio monitors or anything like that. I could go into Ableton and I could have my system audio like sidechain gate or sidechain compress my microphone, right? And have it, when that's loud, automatically uh, push out the system noise or whatever I want from my microphone or generally just chop it the way that I want, right? As opposed to it just being collapsed and there's nothing that I can do once I get it out of the software, right? So um, let's just get into how I actually set this stuff up, right? So um, basically these scenes are a, a bunch of different options, right? And so you just need to create a new scene, right? It's pretty simple. You just do this, right? I'm not, well, I'm worried that if I do this, it's going to break the, the capture. But basically from there, once you have, yeah, see, it changes everything, right? So once you have that, uh, you just need to add these sources, right? Now these sources can be different things. Right, so what I have is I have a display capture, which is like my whole screen. I've got a video capture device, and then I've also got this one that's just Ableton. And I, you know, I renamed this Ableton. You can rename these things, um, but that's actually Ableton, regardless of whether I'm looking at it. Right, that's just the video window of Ableton. Right, so if I wasn't showing you this and I was just showing you Ableton, maybe I wouldn't use display capture and I would just use Ableton. But for the time being. Um, I'm showing you my screen capture because, you know, I'm in OBS, right? So these are pretty easy to set up. Um, I will say that uh, I had to tweak something, right? So in NVIDIA, right, which is the people who make my graphics card, and I think you have to do this for AMD as well, but basically um, OBS wants to use my NVIDIA card by default, right? And so I had to go into my control panel right and I had to go to program settings and I had to go to OBS and I had to tell it to use my integrated graphics card right um, and that's just because my my screen always uses my integrated graphics card. It never uses NVIDIA. That's part of this Optimus system. It's something by NVIDIA where basically it does your screen stuff by the integrated graphics and it'll, it'll cause games to use your accelerated graphics cards. Um, if you don't know what that means, it doesn't really matter. But the point is you need to use integrated graphics down here. If you're on this auto select, you can see the NVIDIA GPU right there. Um, that's going to cause problems and not let you capture. And so when you add this source, right, when you add, I'll just show you, but like a display capture, right, you've got this preview thing that happens here. That will just turn out black, right? You won't be able to see anything there, right? Um, display capture 2, let's delete that. Yes, I want to delete that. Cool. 
So you have to add these things, but that's really, really straightforward. Um, and once you have that, basically all this shows up. So a few other things that I did to make this extra good. Um, output, right? So first off, we're on recording mode, right? Uh, so a few things, you know, I, I changed the default recording path. Yeah, I'm sure you guys can figure out that kind of stuff. Um, this audio track one and two is going to be really important. So that's that's the difference between my microphone track and my system audio track. You can have as many as six. Right? I only need two, but if for some reason you had even more audio streams, that would be an option. Right? I found that because of the compression and everything, um, this BBR 4000 actually works quite good, uh, 4000 bit rate. Um, and so I get the quality that I want, and the file sizes are smaller than what I was working with in Filmora. Right. Um, but basically everything else here is fine. I tried changing this GPU and it caused it not to work. Right. Um, so this output mode advanced, I can't change it right now, but it used to be simple. Right. And back when it was simple, uh, there was fewer options here. Right. And this it was keeping me from being able to get these multiple audio tracks, which is really, really important. Right. So. Uh, if I go to properties, hold on, not that one, advanced audio properties, you'll see here, right, these are the different potential audio streams. My video capture device doesn't have anything, right, because uh, it's just a camera, right, it doesn't have an inbuilt microphone, but if it did, right, I could use that too. Um, but you'll see track one, track two. Now, something really important is when you play these rendered videos from OBS, if you like play it in VLC media player or something like that, you're not going to hear both of the audio tracks, right? It, they'll both show up inside Premiere or whatever you use for video editing, right? But they won't both play in VLC. So if you're checking on your rendered videos and you're trying to see, hey, um, do I have both my audio tracks? You're only going to be able to see that in your video editor, right? And then from there, it'll combine into one uh, track in the way that you edited it, right? And maybe I, I do my audio editing in Ableton if I need to, right? So I'll just go ahead and in Ableton and I'll chop up everything that I want, um, or I'll do the sidechain stuff or whatever it is, right? But uh, you'll have both your audio tracks show up in Ableton. Um, but that that won't happen unless, uh, or that won't happen in like VLC player or whatever. All right, so um, all right, we've gone over the this camera setup, putting your camera to the right and making a bigger canvas than necessary. If you go to the output tab, I mean, no, sorry, the video tab, that's where you'll see that. So if you look carefully here, this says 3200 by 1080. That's the 1080p. My camera is only 720p. So, but my camera is 1280p, right? And then like it's 1920 or whatever for 1080p. Uh, sorry, and my camera is 1280 horizontal lines, right? So 1280 plus 1920 is 3200, right? So, um, yeah, that's how I got all of these lines. I'm doing it 30 frames a second. I think that's sufficient, right? And it sort of uh, reduces the, the processing overhead. So, um, Besides that, you know, YouTube likes 48 hertz, uh, like kilohertz for um, its its audio, so that's why I'm recording in that. But that's basically it, you know. Um, right now, I'm just working with my my integrated drivers, right? I've got a setup where it'll work with my complete Audio 6, right? That's you know, that's this guy. Um, I'm not using that right now, and honestly, like. I've found that it's fine, and um, in some ways, I actually found it's a little bit better, and I'm not sure why, but basically, if you're using the ASIO, uh, you need to have some sort of a system to reroute the audio into somewhere that your screen capture stuff can listen to, and it can't just listen to um, the normal output because Ableton likes to take it over in ASIO. Right. So uh, if you look at other tutorials and stuff, they'll recommend this program called Voice Meter. And I have, I mean, basically the way I have it set up is these inputs, these input three and four, um, 
the main outs, I've got actual physical cables going from the main outs of my Complete Audio 6 into the input 3 and 4, and then that's spitting out through this voice meter, which is like a software mixer thing, right? This is spitting out into my outputs 5 and 6, which is the spdiff output uh, on the Complete Audio, and so then I can capture it. But what I found is I don't know if voice meter and that whole routing system is just like more overhead, but I found that it's actually slightly better performance using just the regular Windows drivers, right? So when I'm in here, right, inside of Ableton, what you'll see is that I'm just on these regular MME things, and uh, the samples that I have, the sample buffer size is 40 or 4092, right? So that's one of those powers of two. Right, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, right? You go to like 5, 12, you know, 10, 24, uh, you know, 24 or 20, 48, et cetera. This is the 40, 90, oh, it should be 40, 96, I think, unless I did the math wrong. But what I found is this is actually the best. I even tried doubling it again and it was not any better, right? In fact, it actually performed worse. It started clicking and I'm not sure why. But you'll notice if I hit play here, Right, so it sounded like there's one little audio glitch there for a second, right? And I, I intentionally use this project to sort of stress test this a little bit. Like I probably have bigger, more intense projects, but I intentionally chose this project to stress test this a little bit. And basically it just worked fine, right? So um, this is just way, way better. Um, you know, you've got these... Uh, you know, to stop recording and start recording, you just click this button and in Filmora, there's this whole big burdensome process of it, starting the video editor and all these things. I, I can't even, it was, it's just a pain, right? So um, I think this is everything important. You know, OBS, uh, like I said, it's free and open source. You just gotta make one of these profiles of like settings, basically add your capture devices, set them where you want, right? Go into your settings, set the canvas size that you want here, right? Get your camera off to the right, right? Get the, the canvas size wide enough to have both your camera at its full resolution and your screen at its full resolution. Um, you know, I, I like to use my audio plugins, right? Like Fab Filter for these filters, but they've got some built filters, like they've got their own noise gates and stuff like that. Right, you just hit this plus button. You can add compressors and all that kind of stuff. But you got these VST2 uh, plugins. Um, you can't, I don't think you can set a custom VST folder, but what I did is I used a Simlink, and I'm going to do a whole nother video just on Simlinks, um, but it's basically like making a fake copy of your directory right somewhere else so i'll i'll show you what i did but basically if you go to program files vst plugins this is where it's looking and it's looking a few other places but this folder is like a link that pretends like it's the real folder right that's what a sim link is it's a link that pretends like it's the real folder and the way i did it is with this link shell extension Right, so if you search for link shell extension, you search for same sim links in the context menu. Uh, there's this little script you can install, uh, and it'll make this pick link source thing pop up. If you click that, you can drop as. Right, junction doesn't show up because this isn't a folder. Folders are what junction sim links are. So if I right click here, pick link source. Right, once you install that link shell extension, then you can drop this as a junction, and so. Even though my VST plugins aren't at the location that this program's looking for, right, it will still find that. And 
you know, as you'll see in the video I'm going to do on the, the sim links, there's a million reasons you might want to do that, right? Like you can make files from your external hard drive, pretend like they're on your main hard drive. There's, there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to do that. But yeah, so the, the gist of it is, you know, you can use your VST plugins. They just got to be at the right spot. All right, guys. So I think that's everything. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you know, I didn't go super that into detail in the settings and whatnot. They're really not that hard to figure out. Um, you really just got to set your video resolutions uh, and your canvas size, set your, uh, you know, your, your sources here to make sure that you have everything that you want to capture. But it's pretty straightforward, you know. Um, thanks so much, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Please comment, subscribe, like, all those things, and take care.